Today we are presenting before you the tasks undertaken by Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar that could not be completed because of his untimely death on the 6th of December 1956. We salute to his tireless services offered to India till his last breath. It wouldn't be an exaggeration to see a better India had he been there for couple of years. Nevertheless, our intention is to highlight some of such tasks which we think is requirement of today's India. He left behind enough for taking forward the unfinished agenda of Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar. Training school for entrance to politics. In 1952, a resolution was moved by Professor K T Shah in the Parliament whether there should be any formal qualifications for the members of Parliament and state legislatures. The members felt that there should be some minimum educational qualifications. On this resolution, Dr. Ambedkar, as Minister of Law, suggested that instead of any formal qualifications, the contestants should have knowledge, meaning pragna, and character, meaning shield. Baba Sahib knew it is very dangerous to have knowledge without character. Shield means character, moral courage, ability to be independent of any kind of temptation, truthful to one's ideals. He somehow not convinced with education as the only criteria because that would deprive a large number of people from contesting. In India at that time education was in the lowest grade, not equally spread among all the communities. Therefore, true representation of all sectors was at risk. So, he suggested leaving the matter for the people to choose their representative of House of Parliament instead of filtering the representative on educational criteria. Later, Dr. B R Ambedkar established the training school for entrance to politics in July 1956, the first of its kind in the country. Dr. Ambedkar was the director and Shri S S Rege was the registrar. The objective of the school was to provide training of parliamentary legislative procedures, develop moral characters, develop oratory in order to put forth their views on various subjects like economics, political, social and parliamentary procedural matters. Dr. Ambedkar planned to deliver lectures on oratory in the month of December 1956 for the students of the school. But due to untimely demise, he could not visit the school. The school started with 15 students and worked from July 1st, 1956 to March 1957, that is less than a year. To set up a world Buddhist mission. Buddhism was deeply studied topic by Baba Sahib. He expressed his love and affinity for Buddha from his childhood. Buddha was one of his gurus for several reasons. Buddha was born as human being and preached his gospel as a common man. He never claimed any supernatural origin or supernatural powers nor did he perform miracles to prove his supernatural powers. The Buddha made a clear distinction between a margadatta and a mokshadatta. The Buddha was satisfied with playing the role of a margadatta meaning a padshaha. In the Mahaparinibbana Sutta, Buddha told Ananda that his religion was based on reason and experience, and that his followers should not accept his teaching as correct and binding merely because they emanated from him. Being based on reason and experience, they were free to modify or even to abandon any of his teachings if it was found that at a given time and in given circumstances they do not apply. He wanted that it should remain evergreen and serviceable at all times. That is why he gave liberty to his followers to chip and chop as the necessities of the case required. Buddha Sun was based on equality as it accepted Shudras to the Bhikkhu Sangha and women to Bhikkhuni Sangha. Buddha taught as part of his religion social freedom, intellectual freedom, economic freedom, and political freedom. He taught equality, equality not between man and man only, but between man and woman. Baba Sahab was convinced that it would be difficult to find a religious teacher to compare with Buddha, whose teachings embrace so many aspects of the social life of people, whose doctrines are so modern and with main concern to give salvation to man in his life on earth and not to promise it in heaven after he is dead. He realized ideal of spreading Buddhism as extreme important. The following three-step model was proposed by Dr. Ambedkar: one, to produce a Buddhist Bible. Two to make changes in the organization, aims, and objects of the Bhikkhu Sangha. Three to set up a world Buddhist mission. His approach to this three-step model is as follows: One, the Buddhist literature is a vast literature. Buddhism suffers for not having such a handy gospel. So Baba Sahab compiled the literature in the book Buddha and his Dhamma. Two, a Buddhist monk or Bhikkhu has everything to do 
with the world unlike other sannyasi. Purpose behind this was to set up a society which would live up to the Buddhist idea embodied in the principles of Buddhism and serve as a model to the layman. 3. Without a mission, Buddhism can hardly spread. As education requires to be given, religion requires to be propagated. Propagation cannot be undertaken without men and money. If the countries which are Buddhist can develop the will to spread Buddhism, the task of spreading Buddhism will not be difficult. They must realize that the duty of a Buddhist is not merely to be a good Buddhist, his duty is to spread Buddhism. They must believe that to spread Buddhism is to serve mankind. But due to Baba Sahib's untimely demise, the task of World Buddhist Mission remained unfinished. Organize under one leader, one party, one program. According to Dr. Ambedkar, the scheduled caste cannot capture the power by joining Congress. He said, it is big organization and if we enter there, we will be near like a drop in the ocean. Congressmen have great pride and we cannot raise ourselves by joining that organization. We will only increase the strength of our enemies by joining them. Congress is a burning house and we cannot prosper us by entering in it. We must organize ourselves into a third party, so that in case socialist and the Congress do not command an absolute majority, they will come to our feet to beg for our votes, and we can then hold a balance of power and dictate our own turn to them for giving political support. You must organize yourself under one leader, one party, and one program for capturing political power. You remove all caste distinction and organize yourself under the aegis of federation. Still, it remains a myth for Ambedkarites to get organized under one leader, one party, one program. To prove that, Pandaran was none other than Buddha. While unveiling an image of Buddha in a newly constructed Buddha Vihara at Dehu Road near Pune, on the 25th of December 1954, Dr. Ambedkar told his audience that, the image of the god Vithoba at Badharpur was in reality the image of the Buddha. He said further that the name of the god Pandarang was derived from Pundalik. Pundalik means lotus, and lotus was called Pandarang in Pali. So Pandarang was none other than Buddha. According to him, Buddhism disappeared from India because of the wavering attitude of the laity which worshipped many other gods and goddesses. This task is also remained unfinished due to his demise. Many Ambedkarites studied this aspect after death of Baba Sahab, but the task is still unfinished.